of this gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is talk to you about the domain and range of the logarithmic graph. So what I have here is the parent graph of the logarithmic function. And what you can see is when identifying the domain and range, we're basically looking for the domain is how far left does the graph go to how far to the right does it go. And you can see that this graph kind of, as it gets closer to the y-axis, just kind of shooting down. It never passes the y-axis. And it never gets to negative values of x. And if you look at the equation, you know, that makes sense. Whatever this base is, let's just, you know, consider it 10. Remember the logarithm saying 10 raised to what number gives you x? Well, if x is negative, 10 raised to y equals, you know, let's just say it's a negative x. There is, if you can't, you can't take 10 and raise it to any number. There is not a number in our real number system that you can raise it to to be able to get a negative value. So therefore, that's why there is no x value, there is no values here for x. So the domain of our parent graph is going to be from 0 to infinity. There's actually a vertical asymptote that the graph is approaching. Um, that, so we'd write an asymptote here that the graph is approaching. Also note that the domain of logarithms and exponential functions are inverses of each other. So exponential functions. Um, the domain was negative infinity to infinity, and the range was 0 to infinity. Well, guess what? The range here is going to be negative infinity to infinity, right? This looks like it's going all the way down, and then it's going all the way up. And it doesn't matter whatever value you plug in for x, you're always going to get a value for y. And there's no limit as far as how low or how high you can go. Um, so I want to make the note that's not the purpose of the main video is, but remember, these are inverse functions. So therefore, their domain and ranges are going to be swapped. So that's kind of important. However, what I really want to help you out with is if you're just given a logarithm equation, how do you determine what the domain and range is? And you know, what transformations are going to affect the domain range and which ones aren't? So below this, I have one, an example of a transformation, uh, transformation function. And you can see I've added some values, a, h, and k. Now remember a, that basically is going to like compress and stretch the graph, as well as reflect around the x-axis. Well, it doesn't matter if I reflect this graph or shift it up, or I'm sorry, just reflect this graph or stretch and compress it. The domain and range is going to remain the same, right? Would you agree with me? The domain and range remains exactly the same. So that's not going to be affecting anything. Um, k is the same thing. k is shifting this graph up or down. Well, even if I shift this graph up, let's say two units, the graph is still going to continue going up, and it's going to still continue going down. So the range is not be affected. If I shift this graph two units up, it's still not going past 0, and it's still going to continue to the right. So the domain and range of a logarithmic graph are not affected by your a and your k. The only thing it's going to be affected by in this example is going to be your h. So if, if, we, have, if we have this h, if remember h of like that shifts the graph over to, let's say it shifts the graph over two units, so 1, 2. Well, this asymptote is also going to move over two units. So if I shift the graph over two units, which would be like x plus 2, um, now you can see that the range is not affected. right? That's still going down to negative infinity to infinity. But now the domain is from negative 2 to infinity. So whatever the value of h is, is basically going to be your um, side point of your uh, side point of your, of your domain. So we can basically say that um, when c is greater than 1, you might say, where does c come from? I'll talk about c in just a second. When c is going to be greater than 1, um, my domain is going to be h comma k. Now remember, I said that was x plus 2, right? Well, remember, if I was going to put it into that format, it would be x minus negative 2. So really, just to make sure you're understanding of that, x plus 2 is the same thing as x minus a negative 2. So in reality, my h in this case is equal to negative 2, because it's x minus h. So it's x minus h, which in this case is negative 2. However, there's another important point that I want to talk about, because we talked about a as being your reflection about your x-axis. Right? And you know, that happens all the time. And a lot of times for quadratics and exponential, that's very important. That affects the, uh, the domain and range. But if we're reflecting the, you know, the x-axis here, that's not affecting our domain and range. However, if I was to reflect the y-axis, then I am going to have a big difference. right? So how do we represent a reflection of the y-axis? Well, we don't do a lot of this 
but this is something that will come up, is going to be c to the x minus h plus k. Okay, So if we have a value of c, which is, um, which is basically going to be your coefficient of x, what that's going to do is that is going to, um, well, greater than or equal to, I guess, that is going to be reflecting about your y-axis. Now, another way to write this out is it to factor out the c, and then you'd have a c over minus h over c. Plus k. I don't want to get too confusing. Basically, the overview. I just want you to know that um, uh, if c is positive, well, hmm, yeah, h over c. Just make sure that you. A big concern is people will see this and they'll say, "Oh, let's say c is two or something." And they'll say, "Okay, it's no reflection, but it's being shit." And let's say h is five. OK, it's being shifted over 5. No, it's actually being shifted over 5 units divided by 2. So you got to make sure you factor out c before you apply your transformations. Um, however, if c is going to be less than 1, and obviously, ladies and gentlemen, um, sorry, less than 0, greater than z greater, greater than 0, not 1, greater than 0. That means it's positive. If c is less than 0, now my domain, you can see here, oops. Now you can see my domain is going to be from negative infinity to whatever your value of h over c is. And the range is still going to be negative infinity to infinity. Now the easiest way to look at this is just have c being positive or negative. And you can see that if it's just positive or negative, it reflects it. But I also want to include you know, if c was a different number as far as like 2 or 3, which does happen, you just got to make sure that you factor that out so you can apply the correct transformation. Actually, and even if it is negative and you have a horizontal transformation, you got to remember to factor that negative out um, to be able to do that. So real, just real quick, if I pretend, let's say I had a negative x plus 3, log of negative x plus 3. That's not a reflection and then a shifting left 3. What you'd have to do is factor out the negative. Now you can see it's a reflection of your y-axis, and the graph is being shifted to the right 3. So it's just very important for you to be able to follow that. Um, so therefore, you can identify what your uh, domain and ranges of your logarithmic function. Thanks.